Hello everyone, we're gonna try this again here. For those of you who were just on, thank you for bearing with us with the technology issues. Um, good morning. We today are going to have Kim Barthel on with us for learning a little bit more about conscious parenting, developmental trauma, and how sensory processing and these different areas interplay in our everyday occupations. We're thrilled to have Kim on. She is an expert in the field in occupational therapy, and we cannot wait to hear what she has to say today. Yeah, so we're Marley and Alexia. I know we just did this little spiel, but we own Sensational Spaces, and we create sensory-friendly spaces for families and community um, spaces to ensure that the kids are regulated um, and optimizing their day and what they can do. Um, so we are going to bring Kim on here for this conscious parenting and conversation here with just a second. All right. Let's see if we can get it to work now. Hello. Hello. Now I hear you. Yay! <laughs> Before? <laughs> silent live. Love it. <laughs> nice to be with you today. Yeah, thanks for joining. Kim. So everyone, we're going to talk about conscious parenting with Kim today. We have some questions um, for her and she has so much expertise. So we'll start. Let's start out by maybe introducing yourself, Kim, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. That is so, is such a strange question, how to answer the question of who are you and what do you do? Well, I, you've already said I'm an occupational therapist. Um, and I, I'm moving into that era of being an elder in this field. And uh, I have been working with children and youth and adults um, for almost 37 years. My passion is mental health and trauma and putting together a holistic perspective of humans and why they do the things that they do. I love it. It's beautiful. So what drove your passion for occupational therapy and educating others? Because you have so many wonderful courses on trauma and informed care that um, we have taken ourselves yes. to. Well, thank you for that. I, you know, becoming a, an educator didn't happen with wish or intention. Kind of happened by default in that even way back in the early 80s, my interest in sensory integration in Canada was pretty new at that time. And people just said, can you share what you're learning with us? And so the journey of being a, uh, a sharer of information has been a big aspect of what I've done for my whole career. And just relish in the opportunity to have the mission of seed planting which comes with being a teacher i love it for sure it's so great how it's come so organically for you in your career it mm. we that's exactly how it's been going so far for the different continuing eds and stuff that we've been doing it we've had no intention of doing it it just people have asked about environment and sensory and how everything interplays together and so it's cool that it's apparently very normal that it just organically <laughs> spontaneously comes together mm -hmm. um so in your opinion what would you consider to be your area of expertise i know you touched on mm -hmm. trauma and sensory but what would you consider your area of expertise or just your most the thing that you're most passionate about right now maybe i think that what drives everything that i think about is the brain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what I'm talking about, eating and feeding, mental health, sleep, uh, sensory processing, autism, trauma. It all takes me back to my love of the brain okay. and neuroscience and all of the workings and unfolding research is really what sits behind my thought processes. Yeah, we've been really digging into the gut brain um, connection mm -hmm. too, and that's been super fascinating for us mm -hmm. um, as individuals, as OTs, um, mm -hmm. and within our company as well as how we look at these families and how we best serve them. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, let's dive in and talk about conscious parenting. Um, so, what does conscious parenting mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, let's start by talking about what does it mean to be conscious. Yes. Right. right. Love it. So consciousness to me is bringing to awareness 
some aspect of you that you weren't aware of a moment ago. So when you think of a conscious evolution, our mission here at Relationship Matters is conscious evolution of the human spirit. It's having a sense of knowing or an aha or a perception about yourself that you weren't connected to a moment ago. And that can happen all day long or it can happen across time. And when we bring that to the parenting journey, that has a legacy of impact. Because when we are plugged in to how we are activated as parents, how we are connected to our children, how we get disconnected, then we are able to change, evolve, connect at layers even deeper than we were before. And that can change us in our behavior, in our children's behavior, and all the way down to their cells. It's incredible. Yeah. It's, it is truly incredible. Um, can you tell us a little bit, what might this look like at home for the parents mm. who are coming in or in a clinic setting or school for the other therapists who are tuning in? It begins with noticing. Mm-hmm. Having the uh, capacity to notice and, and the information that makes us notice the most is when we're frustrated uh-huh. or when we are triggered or activated in our being. Those things are hard to miss. And so when they happen, they are wonderful invitations into self-reflection. And it's that curiosity that you take with you wherever you are, in the grocery store, at home, in the clinic, in the car, (laughs) wherever wherever you are, that curiosity of, I wonder why this is bothering me. What is this about? What aspect of my history is showing up here right now? Mm -hmm. These are the pieces that are the beginnings of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That can make us all think. And I, sometimes I think we think that everybody does this all the time, but when it comes to our OT world and our lens, like we were taught to do that routinely at all of the day um, with our children or our adults that we're working with. And so it's not always second nature for people to look at it in that, in that lens. In fact, this skill is very difficult Mm -hmm. because the moment we move into a stress response, our cognition, our executive functions of self-reflection are diminished yeah. in all humans yeah. because we move from uh, that higher executive function capacity of wondering to survival. Mm-hmm. And so those, th- th- nothing will push our buttons more than our kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's very Absolutely. True. Yeah. I know you had mentioned that for to be conscious you want to be curious and you want to be asking Mm -hmm. five questions it just makes me think even to childhood right Mm -hmm. why Mm -hmm. why is the sky blue why is this Mm -hmm. why children are constantly asking why and they're seeking out that information and so it's something where we as adults can absolutely learn from our children and learn from the children we work with Mm -hmm. in that way in that respective thinking well maybe they don't maybe they don't know like why is that or what don't i know what can i learn more about and be more conscious in that way i love it and what you're talking about here is putting your mind in the mind of the child Mm -hmm. right that attunement I, i mean just a small example here for clinicians I was working with a little guy yesterday on teletherapy and he got distracted. He's nonverbal and he got distracted for a moment and his eyes and his mind went somewhere else. And we have a tendency to want to just bring you back to what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And that's an invitation to pause and say, Hey, what are you looking at? What's interesting for you over there? Every moment, if we are attuned, can be a regulation moment with our kids. Love that. 
That's beautiful. So building off of that, when it comes to an environment, is there components that you feel are conducive to conscious parenting um, or a piece of an environment that would be conducive to it? Well, one of the key factors to conscious parenting and co-regulation in conscious parenting is safety. Yeah. And if you don't feel and and safety meaning neurological safety like deep down mm -hmm. i'm okay in this environment and the environment is filled with sensations mm -hmm. so if i'm bothered by lights i had to change my glasses to sit here and look at this small camera for example today <laughs> if i'm bothered by sounds uh if what i'm uh if there's a, a water drip in the sink, for example, those kinds of stimuli can diminish my feeling of safety. And same for our kids, right? The kids that you and I support often really struggle with the environment. So when we telescope out and are curious about the spaces that families are in, we are adding to those variables of safety so that the sense of ease of consciousness is more available. What if in your mind, or if can you think of one thing that might be, or that is at the top of your head that would be an additive to an environment like that, that we can ensure safety or well, give? Of, yes. You know, one of the most important statements especially when we talk about feeling safe in your body is feeling connected to yourself mm -hmm. and that includes deep pressure yeah so you know dr Ayers always said when in doubt use deep pressure <laughs> and if you find a piece of equipment or a, a a seating like a bean bag or here in canada the yogi bow for example uh, uh, the yogi bow. <laughs> right which sinks you in mm -hmm. to that held space that's almost like a womb space, mm -hmm. yeah. that can be a real body surround that creates a sense of connection to yourself. Okay. And that's a good place to look for safety. Even it, as an adult to this day, I seek proprioceptive input, which is that deep pressure. Sure. Um, that can be when I am like a little bit dysregulated, I ask for a hug or my husband will say, mm -hmm. You need a hug and just that deep squeeze can help calm me so even if you're out in the community and your environment um yes. kind of out of your control there's some there's that mm -hmm. ability to still get that well one thing that we don't remember i think is that relationship is sensory mm -hmm. right you know what i do with my face what i do with my voice how i touch my child those are sensations mm -hmm. and they're not just relational cues, they're sensory relational cues. And they help in that uh, creation of safety. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us what's next for you professionally. Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. I sit and, and dream up things all the time. <laughs> uh, my, my poor Relationship Matters team, thank you, Hillary and Bob, for continuing <laughs> to tolerate the the ongoing um, ideas that we come up with. We are very interested in providing a sense of conscious evolution for organizations, for that. corporate, for, for people in a broader scheme, taking this information beyond neurodiversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think uh, it, our, our roots in working with children and families, all right now this pandemic is inviting it for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we're working on right now. Beautiful. Um, and so you had mentioned to us too that you had an upcoming mm -hmm. continuation opportunity. And I know a lot of our viewers um, would potentially be interested. Would you be sharing what that is? Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about that. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Becoming a Behavioral Detective, which is a live course, is a series of uh, avail for opportunity for a deep dive into understanding the complexity of behavior 
in kids and adults with neurodiversity. Mm -hmm. And it begins on October the 6th. And the second one that I'm excited about that's available right now is trauma sensitive practice, which is globally available. And it's uh, a pre recorded series that people can watch over and over and over again if they wish. I love go. that. Do they have, is there a certain duration for that pre recorded one that it has to be completed within, say, 30 or 60 days? Or do you have like 90 days? 90? Yep. And there is a question and answer period. So Perfect. there's a live Q&A that goes along with the trauma sensitive practice series. Wonderful. Are your courses um, AOTA approved and everything for those who are those CEUs? Now, that's such an interesting question. You know, being a Canadian company, that's not something that usually is uh, part of our sphere of influence. And what we are finding is that many American uh, individuals who want to participate are able to apply uh, okay. dependent on their state. Okay. So right now we are looking to become AOTA approved. And that's a series of uh, hoops, yeah. as I'm sure you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes we sure. do. So where can our viewers find your CEUs in the courses you're discussing? Thank you. It's mm -hmm. kimbarthel.ca. And uh, also we are on every social media platform that you can think of. <laughs> we'll share it too in our post today. So people have that um, and can easily access them. Yeah. Is there anything, Kim, that you can think of that you have questions for us or any mm -hmm. other pieces that you want to leave the viewers that we have here or the ones that we'll watch later with? I just want to say to both of you to uh, a gratitude of the, inspiration that you provide to the families that you support and you. keep you know keep the passion going and when i think about your families that you support just remember that self-compassion that reminder of we're doing the best we can with what we have is such a powerful form of resilience that is one of our favorite things actually to say to the families that we serve is Keep in mind, you're doing the best you can. Your child is doing the best they can, especially with everything going on right now. Like, give yourself grace and give them grace. Is mm -hmm. something I feel like we are continually saying to each other and yeah. to the families that we serve. Yeah. It's so important. Thank well, you. Thank you for joining us. We had one quick question. Somebody was wondering what a CEU is. And see, I bet that is a Canadian person, continuing, <laughs> continuing education units. Yeah. You know, and we have such a, a global community and mm -hmm. for some people that is important and some it is not. Yes, absolutely. Right. Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us today and informing our viewers about conscious parenting and all of the beautiful things you have coming up that they can take part in. Um, and we hope you have a fabulous weekend, Kim. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Take care now. You too. Thank you. Bye now. Bye now.